Welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page, guys. We're happy to have you here. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave us comments, do all the stuff. What are you waiting for? Let's go. I got a drug addiction to feed. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Hollywood Raw podcast. It is Friday. It is time for Adam and I to break down all the good, juicy stuff going through Hollywood. Uh, hi, buddy, by the way. Hi, how are you, dude? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, excited it's uh, Friday. Excited to get into this weekend. Excited to just not think for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I'm with you. This, uh, this has been a weird week. Uh, I mean, obviously... A lot goes into the number one story where we just want answers. We're not getting the answers we want because there's a lot of, I mean, you guys see what we're talking about. You'll kind of get the picture. Uh, well, yeah, I'm excited. It's Friday. I feel like I've got a lot of people that have already hit me up. They're like, I cannot wait to listen to the rundown on Friday because, because there is so much information coming out about Diddy and everything going on in, uh, in Hollywood right now. They're like, please break it down because I don't have time to read the 700 articles that are going up on TMZ. I don't have time to look through all this stuff to really understand what's going on. So can you just help me out? So I'm like, we got you. Yeah, we got no, all we, of we, you. We got all of you. This is our Hollywood Raw Run. There we give you the top 10 stories of the week um, that is basically ranked on data, Google search, and lastly, small but our personal choice. But it's mostly on the data. Um, but, uh, we got some really good episodes by the way, coming out. So I'm excited for this. Uh, you know, our Wednesday episode, we obviously have a guest or sometimes we BS with each other, but we got some really good guests coming up recording with actually one later today, but let's get into, uh, before we get to our raw rundown decks, we read reviews. We love them so much. We actually read them. Uh, we, you know, we, we love them so much. We read reviews on the air. It's, it's the best thing to do to support this podcast. Dax, do you have a review ready? I got one. All right. This one comes from. Nick Joel 21 five stars it's titled fantastic podcast it says hey guys I've been listening to the Hollywood Raw podcast for almost a year now I love how the show is both informative and conversational and it's uh and how it's really just like talking celebrity news with two friends verse what you see in other talk shows where it's a lot of confusing crosstalk and hard to follow you guys bring a level of legitimacy to this thread of entertainment news and I love that you interact with folks on your Facebook group which is called Off the Record, um, and reply to us when we ask questions or send stories that we found. Great work and looking forward to listening in 2024. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Nick Joel. Appreciate you taking the time. Uh, and yeah, the, the, we are trying to be informative. We are trying to be fun. And we're trying to have a great time on our private Facebook group. So thank you for joining. Um, yeah, it's been it's been good. On to the Raw Rundown, the top 10 stories of the week, starting with number 10. Number 10, Ariana Maddox from Vanderpump Rules taking over the hosting gigs of Love Island USA uh, from Sarah Hyland. This was a big story this week, uh, but basically Sarah Hyland, it makes it sound like, you know, she's been hosting the last two seasons of Love Island USA. And uh, I guess she was, she's always been like a big reality kind of fan. Her and Wells, I know, like love reality Very shows. huge. Um, but um she is going to be moving on uh, apparently because she has a conflicting gig that is popped up on her calendar. And so she will not be hosting and Ariana is going to now jump into that role. Can I say, though, the announcement came out very weird um, because Ariana and Netflix kind of announced it before um, Sarah Hyland had a chance to announce it. So she kind of was like, Leaked it. Um, disappointed in the way that it was the news had to break, but uh, yes, I do have another gig, so I won't be coming back. But then there was conflicting stories saying that she hadn't actually signed the deal for whatever this other mystery gig is. So it started to make me think, does she actually have another gig or did they actually fire her and bring in Ariana? Um, yes. I mean, I don't know the truth, Dax. You don't know the truth, but here's what I could say from my speculation and my experience in the industry. I don't know if they fired or got rid of Sarah. Uh, I think she might have been very expensive because she is Sarah Hyland and she could go on other shows and promote it. Ariana is uh, less expensive because they, they, it's show business. She's mm -hmm. a person that you could kind of go on those social the platforms to promote the show. So she's at that level where she can promote the show. She's interesting and unique enough. 
And also, I, I also think that Ariana's team, again, they leaked it themselves. You know, they wanted mm-hmm. to kind of solidify themselves in that position, but also kind of be able to control the narrative a little bit. Um, so that's how I would take because I've seen similar situations like this. But this would be a really weird world that we live in where Sarah Hyland lost a job to Ariana Maddox if that was the case. Like, Dude, that a, would be wild. It's a weird time now, though. You know, you have these actors that used to be big actors and now going for different type of roles, hosting jobs, uh, reality TV, uh, radio jobs. I mean, think of someone, for example, Jerry O'Connell, who, uh, you know, we, we have a little bit of a tiff. He's Jerry banned. O'Connell, yeah. he's, he's banned from the podcast. We'll get into that. <laughs> but uh, uh, Jerry O'Connell was on, was an actor, and now he's become more of a talk show host. So it's like you see the transition of jobs because – it's to get a job in Hollywood. It's not easy these days. And no. uh, there's not the money they used to. So Sarah Hyland, who is a great actress, awesome girl, by the way, she needs to keep working because she wants to work. And she gets a job or something, A, that is a good gig. It's a hosting job where you could get one of those jobs forever. And B, it's well paid. But yeah. it's tough. Let's, I mean, can we say everyone, this? Yeah. Can we say this cheating scandal is the best thing to ever happen to Ariana Maddox? Like, can I say that and not sound like a total dick bag? But like, this has transformed her life, like got her out of a toxic relationship. If it wasn't good, you know, uh, made her like almost a household name for a lot of people around the country. Um, Everyone's fascinated. The show is booming because of it. And she's landing gigs like this. There's no way uh, a year and a half ago, Ariana would have ever been in the mix to host a show like this. There's no way people, there was not enough interest around her. So she weathered some shit with this cheating scandal, but this was literally the best thing to ever happen to her. It sounds great. I mean, listen, she didn't want to end up with Tom Sandoval anyway. And uh, I mean, it just, it wasn't a workout the way it went down that they didn't end up together. was not the best, but great. It's, it's, Making gonna, lemonade out of lemons here. She just bought a, a million dollar home uh, that like has views of the Hollywood sign. I mean, she she's doing okay. She's doing okay. Dax, the number nine story. Will Smith, um, getting a little awkward when talking about money, but then gets very deep. Who was it? Philosophical. By the way? What is it? Who, who, who'd you say? Will Smith. Oh, I thought you said Will Smith. Like I thought you said his name weird. Uh, Will Smither. <laughs> All right. Uh, Will Smith and Worth. Uh, Mr. Will Smith. So go on with the story. <laughs> so uh, he sat down to do a podcast with Speedy uh, Mormon. And, uh, and in there, you know, Speedy likes to ask questions about money. That is one of the things that is like his go to question on his podcast. And he, he asked, he actually asked, Will, like, what is your net worth? And Will was like, ah, I don't like really, I don't talk about that, man. I don't talk about those kinds of things. And then he kind of pushed him a little further and he says, you know, is it accurate that you're worth $350 million? And he was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. And then Speedy, I, I guess, prodded a little more and uh, just said, what is your current relationship with money? And that's when he got like all uh, philosophical. He said, this is the downsize phase of my life. The first half of my life was gather, gather, gather. And the second half of my life is going to be give, give, give. People, they always have that moment somewhere around 50 or something where something changes. He, he then said, he goes, but what happens is when you realize none of it can make you happy. Once you've bought everything that you want, there's literally nothing on this earth that you want to buy. I just wish it was the gift that everyone could have because there's literally nothing that material that can do to nothing material that can satisfy you. I'm sitting here thinking, Will, let me try. Yeah, let me, right. Let me have a shot at what it's like to have everything that I could possibly want on this. Earth. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think it was a good answer. I mean, it was yeah. a very charming answer, and it's a very good perspective. I love perspectives. It's just, However, there, no one can relate to it unless you're a multi, multi, multi millionaire. Like the rest of us are sitting here, like, okay, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. whatever. Like, I guess that's what rich people say, but like, come on. Yeah, we need someone who could, like, 
dumb it down for us and kind of go to the the regular folk. But uh, how about this? Yeah. How about uh, Dax be a part of your give 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 phase in your life? I'm I'm here to be in my receive 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 part of my life. Okay. I could understand though for him not knowing his net worth exactly because it's a complicated oh. question because he's got a bit okay. This property, that property, based on the businesses I have, and how do you so? But I, you could kind of go ballpark on the answer, and you could also say, "Well, I have this business that's yeah, doing well." Likes and I have to this. talk about money like that, like unless you're Elon Musk, and it's like widely reported all the time, and you're just like, "Yeah, well, today the stock market was good, so I'm worth." you know, $210 billion. But like, who really wants to talk about their money? That's so awkward. Yeah, well, not I that mean, I haven't asked that question of our guests, but it's still yeah. awkward. <laughs> there was another story that happened this week with Will Smith and his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. They have closed their charity. They had a charity called the Will and Jada Smith Family Foundation. Um, they kind of closed it down when the charity wasn't making much money. And a lot of major donors fled the charity ever since the way, uh, the will did the famous slap at the Oscars back in was it 2022. So um, yeah, Isn't there was just kind a, of ironic though, that he's saying I'm in the give, give, give part of my life, but I'm shutting down my charity. Unless he's doing it in a different way, unless he's trying to figure <laughs> out a different way to do it. He's a unique guy, you know? And um, I, I, I shouldn't say yeah. he needs a new publicist, but it's like he's and, just in a he's a he's unique a, guy. He's a totally unique guy. And the, the new uh, Bad Boys Ride or Die trailer also hit Bad Boys 4. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of burnt out from the Bad Boys stuff. I, yeah. I'm, I'm just like, oh. Like, I remember. But I, I feel true. that with a lot of big franchises, like even if it was Fast and the Furious, Saw, like by the time I get to four, I'm like, I guys, I can't. Sorry, I'm just, I'm done. I'm burnt out from this storyline. I, I need something new. Yeah, uh, Dax, the number eight story. Uh, Euphoria season three has been delayed indefinitely at this point uh, because the creator Sam Levingston, he just can't figure out what the hell to write about, what situations to talk about next, and so because he's having this serious case of writer's block. Basically, they are delaying the season three, and a lot of people are very pissed off about it. A lot of fans are saying, look, I've, we've already waited like three years. Now I have to wait even more because the writer can't get his act together. And it's funny because a lot of people are like, it's TV, bro. Like, it's not that serious. Like, have a couple of them having sex together. Throw in Zendaya with a uh, an overdose, and you're good to go. Like, what are you talking about? Like, this is... This is not brain surgery here. It's a TV show. So a lot of people are very upset that uh, Sam can't seem to figure out what to write about. And not only that, it puts a lot of people out of work. And HBO is actually saying, okay, well, we are going to have to let our very in-demand cast go out and pursue other things because we can't keep them tied down if there's no story, if there's nothing moving forward. So they're going to go out, pursue other opportunities, and who knows when season three is actually going to uh, hit the TVs? Yeah, it's yeah, that's a good that's a good way of thinking about it. Is they the cast is, sort of has to keep a block out for their schedule mm-hmm. of hey, if they when they start filming the new season of the show, but the new season's not ready. Um, it's funny. I was talking to a writer this week, and he was like, "When you sell a show, when you produce a show, you need to show." that the show has legs. You don't just sell an idea. You don't just sell the first episode. You need to, the, the studios need to know where the character is going, where the cast is going, where the plot is going. They want to know everything on the table. And I'm surprised he just didn't have season three kind of planned out in his head. Um, I, you know, I'm sure he has some ideas, but he needs some help. It's funny. I was, um, I was listening to an interview with Dave, Lil Dicky, the rapper, and I love his show, Dave. He was saying like he needs to figure out like what his show is a little bit more different, but the way they shoot it, but he's trying to figure out the, the journey of the character. And I get it. I get the, those struggles, but yet again, it's, well, there's a lot of pressure now because there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure, but there's a lot of people that you need to manage here that are saving time for you. And it's like, Hey, listen, if I don't have a job here, I got to go find a job, get a job somewhere else. And it gets things pretty complicated. I personally never, I I didn't watch it for you. I couldn't get into it. Um, I know it made some people into stars. I think it's because it hit a great demographic, 
but mm-hmm. I just didn't watch a show, so I could wait. I'm fine watching Curb Your Enthusiasm for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just number I think, seven deck. I was just gonna say one last thing is if you can't figure it out, hire people to help you. You know what I'm saying? Like that is the yeah. whole purpose of a creative development department, a writing team. Like you don't know where it's supposed to go, but get people involved, spend the money so that you can get this this train rolling again. Okay. Anyway, I'll move on. It's all right. Number seven. Uh, number seven. The uh, there's a lot of rumors flying around about who the next James Bond will gonna is gonna be, and it's a guy named Aaron Taylor Johnson. Um, it's funny. He's not a huge name. He's he's definitely been in some movies and stuff, uh, but he's getting a lot of buzz right now. It seems like um, they're about to release his name, at least according to a lot of the online websites talking about him. Pierce Brosnan has already given him his seal of approval. Obviously, Pierce Brosnan, one of the most well-known 007s um, in, in history. And uh, that someone asked him, hey, what do you think about Aaron Taylor Johnson taking over this role? Because they had actually been in a, a movie together. And he goes, absolutely. Uh, I 100%. He is a phenomenal actor. Um, he definitely has the look. He's got these like, um, this is not Pierce. This is me or this is me saying this, but he's got this like blue eyes that stand out. Remind me a lot of like Daniel Craig. Um, you know, when Daniel mm-hmm. would show up and he had these like piercing blue eyes. I think that was one of the... Uh, biggest characteristics of that bond role that he played um but he he gave him he said yeah i 100 percent support that decision um it's interesting because most people i i do you know him i like are you familiar with this guy's who he is i once you like kind of point him out the work he's done i'm like oh he's good and i kind of like that he's a solid actor, but he's not a name. Like he's yeah. a guy who you've seen, you're like, oh, he's good at what he does. But yet again, he doesn't, when you look at the role, you see James, he could be James Bond. You don't see him as, like we always say, Lindsay Lohan takes on an acting role. You don't see the, the character she's playing. You see Lindsay Lohan. This guy mm-hmm. can actually be James Bond because he's at that level where he's a solid actor and fame, but he wouldn't take it over. So, um, so I, people may recognize him. He was in Bullet Train, which was like what? It wasn't that Brad Pitt in that movie. That was Brad Pitt. Great Ass, movie, was, by the way. Yeah. Kick Ass ha- was like a, a pretty movie popular movie when it came out. Uh, other than that, I mean, he was in Kick Ass Two. He was in Godzilla, Savages. I mean, he's been in quite a few. A million little pieces. He was in. The Walt Kingsman he was in. So he's been in Fifty Shades of Grey. He's been in things, but he's never been like the big actor. Uh, he's in Avengers. I don't know what the hell he was in Avengers. Do you? But you know what? The, no, I don't. But the this is the one thing that's so interesting about him. And he's kind of talked about it and he's just discussed it. He mm-hmm. is 33 years old. Okay. His okay. wife is 57 years old. Oh, there's a, yeah, there's a 24 pictures, yeah. year age gap, which, you know, they've addressed it. They said there's, he kind of grew up quick and they're fine with it. They're happy with it, but that's whatever. I don't judge. It's just sort of unique. You don't see that too often. It's funny how people like get so weirded out with that. Like you, you so many people get weirded out and you're like, whatever. They love each other. Let them be, let them do their yeah. thing. I don't know. There is. Yeah, no, but you know uh, what's so funny? So, whatever happened to the Aegis Alba thing? I mean, I feel like that was everyone's number one pick for Bond. Like, yeah, Aegis Alba yeah. for like months and months and months. Like, that was the person everyone was talking about. I don't get it. There was a lot of people over the years. I mean, I'm going to read some, just comes from Wikipedia. This is, these are people that were considered but declined the role um, of James Bond. One of them was Clint Eastwood. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, the other That's one was Burt Reynolds, one. Liam Neeson, Christian Bale, uh, Dominic West. I mean, it's pretty interesting that these people were kind of considered and also turned the role down. Same thing at Henry Cavill and uh, Sam Worthington. Um, you know, Sam Worthington was up for it, but Daniel Craig was chosen over him. Um, but yeah, you're right. There was a lot of gas behind Idris mm-hmm. Elba and that just kind of froze. I don't know why people aren't speaking about that much in the media or he hasn't like questioned about it yet. It just seems weird. Like it seems like if that's what everyone's been wanting, why did, why didn't they, I, I, and again, 
maybe Idris didn't want it himself, but everyone else wanted him. So maybe they did approach him and he said, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> you know, I we'll don't know. Find out the answer is, yeah, we'll find out the answers eventually to that. Because this guy is young enough where he could be doing this role for a while, for a long yeah. time. Um, as long as he does the role well, which I think he will. But I, I got to imagine in the next couple months or within the next year, Idris Elba is going to be asked about the James Bond role. And hopefully we find the truth. Was he offered the role? Did he turn it down? Or what? Uh, Dax, number six. Uh, Jeremy Allen White has been named uh, to be playing Bruce Springsteen in uh, the new biopic. And obviously these biopics have turned people into household names a lot lately. You know, it seems like every time one of these biopics comes out, these are the movies that land them in an Oscar-nominated role. You know, we, we saw... Obviously, the Elvis movie. We've seen the um, Elton John movie. The like all of these movies get a, like Academy nominations every single time. So don't be surprised if in two years from now we see Jeremy Allen White up for an Oscar nomination for playing Bruce Springsteen. Uh, so this is a big deal. Um, and if you look, he kind of looks like Bruce Springsteen, like a it young was, version of Bruce great, Springsteen. Yeah. He's so, small. He kind of wears the hat like him. He's a leather guy. He, mm-hmm. he he could play like I was like, yeah, it makes total sense. Like the this the body type of them. Like he could definitely play Bruce Springsteen. Now there he hasn't signed the the contract yet, but the and the negotiations haven't even begun with Jeremy Allen White. But it seems like somehow work got out that he's the top choice to play Bruce Springsteen. I don't know if he even has to I, audition I or how that happen. works. Yeah, um, I think it's he's just a good enough name that could. He's a good enough name where that could bring in attention, but also could do media and press. Um, mm-hmm. That's why you don't bring in some random actor because some random actor, you know, it's hard to get him on these TV shows. But also, the studio behind this film is A24, which is a huge studio. Um, they just did the Iron Claw, the Zac Efron movie. So I, I don't know. I think that could be. I'm excited for this if this happens. Yeah, so this is going to be tentatively titled Deliver Me From Nowhere. This The whole film will be based on uh, a, a book with the same name, you know, Deliver Me From Nowhere. It's the making of Bruce Springsteen's Nebraska solo album. So I, I think there was a lot of narratives surrounding that album, what was going on in his life at that time. And so it could be a really fascinating look inside the boss's life back then. Yeah, I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan as a guy from New Jersey. If you think that some other actor could play Bruce Springsteen, leave us a note in our private Facebook group called Off the Record. I would love to hear your suggestions, who else should play Bruce Springsteen. But I don't know. Jeremy Allen gets my vote. It's uh, I think he just has the look. He's got the style. He's got the swag. I think uh, it just fits. And they would film that movie. I think they're they're looking to start filming the movie in the fall production, mm-hmm. in the fall this movie but also i think it kind of goes into what euphoria has an issue jeremy allen's on a show called the bear which is a huge success can he do the bear and also bruce springsteen move like did yes, that kind we've of seen that before like yeah they he may have to film for a month doing the bear and then he's got three months to film you know the bruce springsteen biopic like they figure they figure it out yeah, and then actually, I don't know if you saw the photos this week. You saw uh, Timothy Chalamet playing Bob Dylan. Yeah, they're filming that in New York, and I was like, man, he he looks he the part looks of Bob like Dylan. A, he's he like really acting like he's kind of walking around solo. Like, oh, he is Bob Dylan. There we go. That's going to be another name we hear Oscar nomination. I'm telling you, every time someone plays someone else, I don't know what it is, but immediately the Academy's like, yes, let's give him yeah. a, a nomination. It's wild. Dax, the number five story. Uh, Christine Quinn's husband files a restraining order against her, apparently concerned over the uh, ex selling sun, uh, selling sunset star may abduct their son. So we talked about this a little bit last week um, in regards to this arrest that happened outside their house. There was a um, alleged domestic violence uh, situation where it was told that there was a bag of glass that he threw at her missed hit the kid at least that is what the initial story was well he is now requesting a restraining order from his spouse in part because he has concerns that she may uh, try to abduct their three-year-old son christian Uh, people magazine obtained a copy of the request on tuesday and in there he uh, wants her to move out and stay a hundred yards from his los angeles home 
in the request. He is, this is all started from that alleged domestic violence incident on March 19th. He claims that that day the couple argued over two dogs that she owns. And he it's in there, it says, quote unquote, which she refuses to have house or crate trained. In the document, it says that he is constantly finding himself the only one cleaning up after the dogs, so much so that operating and cleaning the remote vacuum cleaner has become a bonding activity between him and his three-year-old son. I mean, that's petty when you're like, it's now a bonding situation. We clean up so much after this bitch. Yeah. Like, like, come on. Um, and then uh, uh, he claims in there that she refused to clean up after her dogs telling him that, uh, quote unquote, that she tried to clean but it was not going to do anything for she was not going to do anything further at that point he grabbed the trash bag from the floor and threw it to the side of the room against the wall in the document it claimed that he did not throw the bag toward her or their son additionally there was no glass in the bag as there was no broken glass in the room or anywhere in the house so it sounds like he is refuting what the initial issue was uh, but because of the arrest and the domestic violence situation um Basically, he's saying, I, I don't want her to flee with the child, so please help me, Mr. Judge. He's definitely trying to kind of clear his name because last week was not a good week for him. Even the no. photos of him being arrested, he looked terrible. And then, obviously, with the with him starting to say that, <laughs> you know, publicly saying that she's not cleaning up. She's not dogs, cleaning up after her dogs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, man, this these girls are really good at staying somewhat relevant somehow. And I'm not saying this way. Are you talking about like all the selling sunset? All and the like selling sunset girls. people more. Not even that. I consider the selling sunset different than uh, they're totally different than the housewives people because Bravo has the Bravo army behind them. They have the network behind them. This show is just it's on Netflix, but it's not, you know, it's just a small production company behind them. So it's. They're, you know, these girls are smart and they're really good at kind of keeping their name out there, being out there, getting photographed and more. Uh, I'm not saying this was a PR stunt by any means, but somehow they're able to take over the Google searches this week and get everyone to kind of really, you know, pick up their story. So it's, uh, I mean, this story is not done. We're going to see how it kind of ends. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Christine Quinn. And she, this was the one that was married to uh, Justin Hartley. Which is just wait, was she? Wait, no, it's Christine not. Quinn? No, no. Oh, it's okay, the never other mind. One. I forget her. This name, one but... actually, no, it's funny. Yeah, I got mixed up. This one, I had. She was like calling some it's, photographers. Uh, I know in Trist New York. I get uh, Strauss, whatever her name is. Yeah, I forget. I forget. But they all kind of blend in together. This one, I had a phone call uh, from a, someone on her side, like trying to do set up shots one time in New York. And, but uh, I'm sorry, I just I love this, like, to put in the police documents or the report, like, or not even the police report, I'm sorry, like the court documents, like, this is over the fact that she can't pick up dog crap. <laughs> yeah, they took up, they took a page out of the Amber Heard Johnny Depp playbook, you know, like him or her <laughs> embarrass each other. Uh, so Dax, crazy. the number four story and Hathaway. Everyone hates Anne Hathaway, and she is telling us why. Um, no, this is kind of a... Yeah. What's funny is Anne Hathaway even acknowledges that she has a lot of haters uh, towards her, and it actually had a pretty toxic impact on her career. And as I was reading this whole story, I was like, I've not been a big Anne Hathaway fan over the years. And part of it, I'm like, I don't even know why I don't like, like there's certain moments that stick out in my head that I don't like love. She just came across as like super arrogant or I didn't like the way that she talked to the paparazzi or you know, like there was certain things that in my mind, I didn't love about her. But she says that the big moment that really impacted her career, I guess she admitted this to Vanity Fair, um, was that it was her Oscar comment or her Oscar speech. Do you remember when she got she won the Oscar back in 2013 for Le Miserable? And yeah, um yeah. and and right after that Oscar speech, people hated her. She said she they that she was accused of being too eager, too excited, genuinely, generally like thrilled and to to reach this milestone in her career, but people didn't like 
how she responded to winning the Oscar and it killed it for her so much so that people weren't hiring her movie for her, her, for movies that they were like, you are the perfect person to play this role. However, uh, we don't feel like the, the general public is really going to attach to this because you are in it. So we're going to have to pass on you for the role. And she said for a long time, it was, she was almost like she was blackballed from Hollywood because the public disliked her so much that everyone felt like I can't have her in a movie because no one's going to watch the movie. Uh, but she said Christopher Nolan is actually the person that really like pulled her out of the depths because she was had she was having a really hard time with it. And he cast her in Interstellar. And she said it was really the, the movie that saved her from this like Hollywood drought that she was going through. And she said, I don't know if he knew at that time that backing me had the effect that it was going to have and my career did not lose momentum the way it could have if he hadn't backed me um and so it was a um, a big deal that he was in her corner and he may not even thought about it he may have just been like she's the perfect person for the role let's do it i feel that a lot of people have this story about christopher nolan like so many people praise him for him giving them a chance when maybe they were down in their career or they, they, no one else would hire them. And then Christopher Nolan came around and said like, this person is good. I'm going to make them a star again, or I'm going to give them that chance. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. I, so let me ask you Dex personally, do you still have a little bit of a tiff against Anne Hathaway? So not as much as I used to. And the reason is because of Howard Stern, because she did, an unbelievable interview on Howard Stern, which I listened to. I went into it thinking like, oh, I'm not going to like it because it's Anne. And then I left being like, damn, Howard Stern made her really likable. Or no, shit, she's just really likable. I don't know why I don't like her. Like, I literally had all these thoughts going through my head. But she, her interview with him was like amazing. Yeah, I mean, she's a great actress. And she's such a big actress that even when she does a role, I don't see... The I don't see Anne Hathaway. I see the character, which is what you want. Um, I can only know, and I felt bad for her. I mean, I, when she hosted the Oscars with James Franco, it Ooh. wasn't good, but it really Ooh. wasn't her fault. Like, I, I mean, she yeah. tried. It's just not her thing. It's just not her thing. And I It wasn't either of their things. Like, it, it was just a fail all around. Yeah, and again, I think we kind of held it against them, and James kind of, you know, during the show, I if I remember, they were not kind of – blending in well and i think everyone understood that it's not going over well so they had to kind of take sides and it was just really uncomfortable for everyone and it was an attempt and it just didn't work out it's not i don't think it's her fault you know what's funny though yeah i I had totally forgotten that she even won an oscar i think she had short hair at that time she did yeah. <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do? With I just rem- no, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about the speech. I was like, she had this short hair, and I remember the, the short speech. hair. But like, if you would have asked me, hey, does Anne Hathaway have an Oscar? I'd be like, no, like, no way. Like, you know, because in my mind, I think of like The Devil Wears Prada and Princess Diaries. Like, I had totally, I'm also not a Les Miserables kind of watcher. So to me, she, I don't even associate her with that movie. Yeah, um, I will say from my personal experience, I did meet Anne Hathaway. I've seen her around New York, but I never really, I didn't talk to her, I didn't see her, I didn't bother her yeah. or whatever. One time I was at the airport and I was waiting for someone else at the airport and uh, and then she came and I, t- I didn't speak to her on camera, I spoke to her off camera and she couldn't be any nicer. She was so sweet, she was so nice. She actually grew up in the town next door to me and she grew up in a very nice town. I didn't grow I I grew up in like the, not as good town as her mm-hmm. finding me. She grew up in a very one of the nicest towns in New Jersey. And we spoke about the town. I told her where I was from. And she said, Oh, do you know this person? And I said, Yeah. And we just talked for like 10 minutes. And she was so nice. She gave me her time cool. at the airport. And she was so cool and so nice. And I, you know, from that experience, I was like, no, she's actually really cool and nice. And um, I know from the photographers recently who shoot her, they're like, you know, they don't wait on her all the time. When they see her, they shoot her and she sort of like gives a wave and does her thing. You know, she doesn't That's all stay you can in the media for, for the, she doesn't stay in the media for the wrong reasons. So they mm-hmm. don't really kind of hound her. You know, they might sell a photo here and there, but it's not worth sitting on her every day. But I know from my personal experience, she was really nice. So I kind of felt bad for her when everyone turned on her. <clears throat> so yeah. yeah, good on her. Uh number three. 
Uh, Eva Mendez opening up about, about why she kind of had this big break from Hollywood, stopped acting, and uh, and everyone was kind of like, what the hell ever happened to Eva Mendez? Well, apparently she she and Ryan Gosling had kind of like a non-verbal agreement that she would stop acting to raise the kids and he would continue doing his acting career. And she said, look, this was not like a negative thing. This is a no brainer on my part. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to step away from all the craziness and really focus on my children. And they even moved like out of Hollywood, like up North a little bit just so that they could like have this normal childhood for their kids, but also be able to focus on them without like the spotlights of Hollywood. So she did the Today Show and she was just talking about, um, you know, about this whole situation and really, I think, happy. Like, there, I don't think there was any bad feelings about why her career kind of like stalled out there because um, she could easily come back. You know, it's not like she's gone forever. I think she just is like, this is my priority. This is what I'm focused on, and this is what makes me happy. So I like that. She said, it was a no-brainer. I'm I'm so lucky. I'm like, if I can have this time with my children, and I still worked, and I just didn't act because t- acting takes you on location. It takes you away. It was, it was m- almost like a nonverbal agreement that I was like, okay, he's going to work, and I'm, and I'm going to work. I'm just going to work here. So I think that, I, like, they seem like a very, very healthy couple. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to see these healthy couples when it's two massive stars, but it works out really well for them. The thing I appreciate most about this interview, Hmm. weirdly enough, is the timing. She didn't do it before the Oscars. She didn't do it right the week after the Oscars. She waited a little bit after because obviously, you know, Ryan's had his moment during the Oscars performing. You know, Barbie obviously was a lot of hype. So she didn't take this interview didn't take the attention away from him. Mm-hmm. In fact, now Ryan Gosling has a movie coming out, I think in the beginning of May called the uh, fall guy. And this kind of makes you like him a little bit more. Cause they have, a you know, it could we like Ryan Gosling? Could we like Ryan Gosling anymore? I don't think so. Like the guy is like probably one of the most beloved guys. He's like the female or the, the male version of, I don't know, like a Reese Witherspoon or something, you know, like people just love them. He's a charming guy, but it's good to hear her speak. I thought the timing of the interview was really good. Um, she seems happy. I respect it a lot. I, I, again, she had nothing to really um, get out of this interview except kind of like kind of just putting it all out there and explaining what's going on in the relationship and how it works. And yeah. I'm sure Ryan's very appreciative that, you know, he's very fortunate that he found a partner that could, you know, understand them. And yeah, it, it's it wasn't spoken about she says but it was like kind of just came about and uh, which is sort of unique that they were able to just kind of everything was able to fall in place um but good on them dax the number two story number two story rebel wilson claiming sasha baron cohen asked her to stick her fingers up his butt um <laughs> and this is all during a, a scene during the left scrims to be uh but rebel wilson she's putting out a new book uh talking all about her life and in there she's making some explosive claims about her experience working with sasha baron cohen um this new memoir um is getting a lot of buzz right now but uh, she claims there's an uncomfortable experience while filming that 2016 comedy she said um that they were filming the scene and he would kept asking asking her to do like a nude scene and like strip down and then you're going to stick your finger up my butt. And she was like, I I, I don't do nude scenes. Like that's, that's not something I do. So she claims that she kind of like slapped him on the butt and improvised something else to try to get out of this super awkward experience. Um, What's interesting is Sasha is basically disputing everything that she is saying in this book uh, saying that there are multiple witnesses, there's sets, there's the the script, everything. This whole thing was scripted. She knew what she was getting into when they were filming the movie. So he is claiming BS. She is sticking by her story, uh, basically calling him the biggest asshole in Hollywood, quote unquote, the biggest asshole. Um, and uh, I guess she get she dedicates an entire chapter to Sasha Baron Cohen. She's like, look, the book is not, the whole book is not about him. It is simply a chapter 
um, about why he is such a horrible person to work with. Um, but that book isn't coming out yet. So when it comes out, we will have to read it. Uh, it does sound pretty interesting, um, but this is going to definitely be a he said versus she said kind of situation. Yeah, she said um, she was facing legal action by him before, I guess, his team was aware of this book coming out and this chapter being written about him. And mm -hmm. they hired a crisis PR company and they tried to threaten her with a lawsuit. Can he actually sue her for saying this stuff? Um, like, is there, I, I don't know, how, how does that work? Again, we're not lawyers asshole, here. Like, I don't I don't think calling someone as an asshole is like libelous. You know what I'm saying? I think that if if he did ask her to put her her finger up his butt like that's a story right like that is an interesting story but if it was in the script it doesn't mean that that's false so it's still something that can be talked about so uh i don't know i i i, I don't see anything here that is really like super damaging to his reputation it's like when it's said on on the face of it it sounds like oh my god like what kind of me too kind of shit is this? But then you kind of deep dive into it and you're like, well, it seems like an accurate story that was, that probably happened, but maybe <laughs> yeah. it wasn't in the way of like, you know, how she presented it. Maybe. I, I don't know. I, you know, I can, I can understand that would be a very uncomfortable situation for her. And I think that's the part that we need to focus on is if, if it wasn't in the script and she didn't know about it, that would be very uncomfortable. And there's a lot of women in Hollywood that go through some weird shit and good for her to be able to talk about it. I could just, uh, there's his side, there's her side. I'm not picking a side. However, yeah. I could see Sasha doing interviews when the movie came out and saying, when you film that scene, what'd it go? Well, I told her to put a finger in my butt. You know, I could see him <laughs> saying that like, cause it's funny and that would make headlines and knowing him and what he would just do for the joke. So, and it's, it's just, uh, it is what it is. I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, just put your own finger in your butt. That's what Jack does, <laughs> you know? That's, do it yourself, uh, bro. Don't yeah. make someone else do it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right, Dax, the number one story of the week. You probably got it right if you guessed it, because if you didn't, you were just living in the cave somewhere. What is the number one story of the week, Dax? Uh, Paris. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, P. Diddy uh, getting his home raided by federal agents this week. This has been the story that uh, has everyone talking. So federal agents raided his uh, home in Los Angeles and Miami as part of this criminal probe based in New York. So the U.S. Department of Homeland Security raided his properties. Uh, they were authorized to search them by warrants issued in a Manhattan federal court months after there was a series of lawsuits that accused Combs of serious sexual misconduct. So law enforcement sources basically said, yep, this is why we did it. But uh, there was phones seized from his Miami house uh, before they were scheduled to leave for a trip to the Bahamas. And if you've seen any of the photos that have been released they literally like trashed his house they went in they flipped his houses um i guess they were basically trying to seize phones computers pretty much anything else that was suspicious um a source familiar with the situation told nbc that there were three women and one man that have been interviewed by the new york by federal authorities in connection to the probe involving possible sex trafficking sexual assault and the solicitation and distribution of illegal narcotics and firearms related to to combs um and then combs i guess has denied all the civil allegations against him so i do need to put that out there but combs was sued if you remember in a manhattan federal court by cassie his ex uh in that suit back in 2005 uh, it said in back in 2005 when she was 19 that combs lured her into a professional relationship by signing her to his label bad boy records and within several years introduced her to a sexual relationship introduced her to quote unquote a lifestyle of excessive alcohol and substance abuse and required her to procure illicit pre prescriptions to satisfy his own addictions that suit claimed that uh that combs raped cassie in her home after she tried to leave him and he quote unquote blew up another man's car after learning of his romantic interest in her and would often uh beat and kick her according to that 
Cassie um, and Combs, I guess, if you remember that that story went out and then like literally the next day it was gone. It was settled um, for an undisclosed undisclosed amount. But after that settlement, two other women came forward um, and their lawsuits also accused Combs of sexually assaulting them. A fourth woman identified in court filings as Jane Doe sued him in December, accusing him of being raping. Real quick. Yeah. Why is the name always Jane Doe? Can we change the name Jane Doe? In li- it's that always did, like well, when they want to use her name. The, correct. You don't want to be. It's an it's anonymous name. John Doe, Jane Doe. It's I'm say Mary built Jane. into our system. <laughs> it can't yeah. change it now. It's always the same one. Yeah. Um, so she sued him in December, accusing him of gang raping, uh, her two decades ago when she was 17. So basically all this combined, plus, you know, these allegations of, I guess there being like a drug mule that worked for him. Um, so this apparent drug mule was arrested at the Miami airport who was actually with Diddy at the time. It was one of his guys. Uh, they raided the the his homes and then this guy named brandon paul who is 25 was arrested on monday at the airport after federal agents intercepted a private plane that he was about to board with diddy he was booked into one with one count of possession of suspected cocaine and suspected marijuana edibles according to that police report and um i guess federal agents found drugs in that guy's bag uh, and, and this was working in conjunction with Homeland Security, which were the people that raided Diddy's house on Monday and Border Patrol. So, like, everyone was in on this. Um, and then, like I said, this guy was the alleged, quote unquote, drug mule um, in one of the lawsuits. He was named one of the lawsuits against Diddy. So those this is all a pretty crazy situation. And it said that this guy would um, acquire and distribute guns and drugs and other things to combs. And so that's why they really wanted to get their hands on this guy. So. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on here. I, I think we all want answers, but this is an investigation because Diddy was not arrested. So with all the things we heard about his house, yes, was raided, but he himself was not arrested. Um, this kind of goes into the accusations, uh, the story going behind them. So, uh, Dax, so far, what, are you, what is your when you heard about go, everything going on? What? Is, how could you share with our audience your what you think is actually going on from the police side to Diddy's side and more? <laughs> I have no idea, dude. Like this, this whole situation is wow. The fact though that they raided his homes, they arrested people around him but didn't arrest him makes me wonder if he's just wrapped up with bad people doing bad things, or he's the greatest mastermind and just make sure that he is not the person doing the bad things, but is benefiting from the bad things. I don't know. I, I I think that this story has a long way to go. I think that um, this is going to be tough for Diddy to, the, the bad PR over the last couple months, like Diddy's credibility, Diddy's like reputation is going to be pretty stained after everything between the Cassie stuff, the multiple lawsuits and accusations from these other women. Now the raids, like people are going to distance themselves a lot. I mean, the fact that Kanye West distanced himself from Diddy the other day, is, I feel like is saying a lot. <laughs> because that, That's one person that everyone else is distancing. But I guess Diddy like wanted to hang out with Kanye backstage um, a, a couple like weeks back at one of their concerts. And that word got to Kanye and Kanye was like, nah, I'm good. I don't need to talk to him. So yeah. I think we're already seeing that fallout of people going, nope. Uh, I mean, he had to apparently uh, there's a reportedly he agreed to sell his, his stake in Revolt TV after he stepped down as chairman back in November around all those allegations. Um, but they're saying, yeah, we have potentially found a new person and it will remain black owned. Uh, but he will be out of Revolt TV. So it's like everyone is like, don't want to touch Diddy with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a really tough stamp on his resume. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, eventually you think he's going to have to address it. There's one thing that actually came out this week. Do you know Diddy's autograph went 
up like 150 percent value this past week because wow. his people don't think he's going to sign again. You know, there's a chance that he could get arrested, and then you don't see P. Diddy again. So how's he supposed to sign autographs? So people mm. are saying, "Hey, I want. I'm going to try to raise the value of his autograph because you might not see him again. So get it now because we we don't know." But from P. Diddy's side, again, he was not arrested. And uh, there's a lot of people making jokes about Diddy. I will say these are a lot of people that were wishing to get into Diddy's parties back in the day. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people, oh, man. And then the other side is the police, their back's against the wall. And they need to show the public that they did everything in their in – their, they did every single thing they could do to get all the evidence they can – to either prove that he's guilty or not guilty because they don't want to look like they have asset. it. This is a very serious offense. So if they yeah. look like they have asset, it, they're going to look terrible. So in order for this case to go down smoothly and for there to come a, a successful conclusion, everyone needs to do their job. Was The raid was, I, I mean, I would say well needed because mm – -hmm. I mean, we're, they have to do their job, and this was the best way for them to get the uh, as much evidence as possible. Once the so apparently, when the police, it wasn't just the police; it was like federal agencies. When they raided the house, they cut all surveillances within the house, so no one they could not get Diddy's camp could not get video of the actual search that was going on in his house. Oh, wow. um, the one part I have questions is how did the the drug mule get into it. Now I know the drug mule got thrown into it because there was a he was, guy was named he, in a lawsuit. Exactly. Why. So that he was named in the lawsuit. And when they arrested him, he just so happened to have a little bit of Coke and some weed on him. Um, it just happened. But, well, when you're a drug mule, that stuff tends to be up your butt anyway. Yeah, exactly. You put in a condom, <laughs> you put in a balloon, you put in your butthole, you know what you guys do. But um, yeah, I, it's, it, I got so many calls regarding this week and, the issue is we just didn't get answers. You, you, we didn't get the answers we want. However, uh, it's funny to see some of the people that came forward this week. And not came forward. It was old interviews that kind of came forward, Dax. Did you see like uh, – I yeah, saw like, Usher uh, talking about like parties back in the day when he was younger. He would go to Diddy's house and he was like, I saw things that I couldn't even understand. And, and he goes, I, you know, uh, I wouldn't let my kids go there, <laughs> you know, so – what that is referring to, I don't know. But like years ago, that interview people took with a grain of salt. They were like, oh, yeah, it sounds like Diddy. He always had the crazy parties. Everyone always talked about his parties. Now, years forward, you look back at that interview and you go, ooh, that doesn't sound good. That sounds really bad. But yeah, knows? you were you like, Usher, exactly. What did you see? Even Uncle mm -hmm. Luke from Two Live Crew who had these crazy music videos back in the day. He had an interview recently where he said, like, I would go to the party and leave early. You know, he said, I'm sorry, I didn't know what goes on after hours, but I, was, I wasn't I was trying to find out. I know my place. And for Uncle Luke to be like, yeah, I'm bouncing from this party, these older interviews are starting to come to surface. And they're like, man, really, some stuff must have happened there. Uh, again, allegedly, because to hear these people's old interviews kind of come into it. But the one thing that was interesting was um, the Diddy actually – really quick stepped down he sold his all of his stake in revolt tv uh, and that happened really quick so um i guess he i don't know if he needed the money or revolts like listen we need to part ways in order for this company to be I, th I think everyone so. everyone wants to not touch him get away from him as fast as possible i think there's going to be a lot more information that comes out over the next couple of weeks i'm sure that diddy will be in our top 10 rundown for quite some time because it just seems like everyone's focused on this. What's going to happen? Is he going to be arrested himself? Is he going to land himself in jail? Like what's going to happen? So we, we will keep you guys up to date with all things Diddy as it breaks. But anyway, that is our top 10 rundown, uh, raw rundown for the week. I hope you guys feel so much more informed going into the weekend. You guys are ready to tell your friends, here is what's happening with Diddy, because now I know all the details. Um, anyway, make sure you guys, uh, thank you for joining us today, and make sure you take your time, head on over, leave us a review, a five-star review on uh, Apple Podcasts. I know that you can leave a, re 
You can give us stars on Spotify, even though you can't give us a review. We do appreciate stars as well. Um, and uh, make sure you follow us on all of our social media, media platforms. We've got our private Facebook group called Off the Record, where you guys can talk directly with us, sound off on all things, see the breaking news as it happens from uh, people who are equally as obsessed with Hollywood as you are. Um, make sure you follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, everything at Hollywood Raw. You can follow Adam at Adam Glenn. You can follow me at Dax Holt. And we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? If you like that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go.